Hi friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm excited because I have another one page wonder for us. So let me show you what this one does. Um, there's probably different closure types you could make, but I just, on this first flap, put um, a circle and an eyelid and put some twine around it and then just wrapped it. So anyway, this one opens up like this and there's a little pocket and I used um, graphic 45 paper for this one. We're going to use a different kind of paper for the one we're going to make together, but this one is the raining cats and dogs. So, okay, it opens that way and then it opens and there's a pocket here. I've got a pocket here. Opens up here. I decided not to put a pocket and just put some journaling paper, but you could certainly put another pocket or belly band or something there. Oh, and these um, pockets, they flip up for journaling space. I thought that was so fun. So um, a pocket on both sides and then some little journaling spots just for fun. Um, and that's just using some copy dyed paper. And then on the back, there's another flip. I closed that one with Velcro. There's a pocket up here, and there's a pocket here. Okay, so this one um, I have made multiple times and used for gifts and inserts in larger journals. Um, and I've been making it for a few years, and guys, I honestly can't remember. Um, I've, I know I've changed it a touch, but I can't remember whose video it was. So if you know, let me know. But um, anyway, we'll have fun making one together and hopefully it will be new to you. Okay. So um, again, I like it because there are options. You can certainly um, do different things. I will say you just need one piece of 12 by 12 paper to make the base of the folio and you get the flaps, this pocket, this flap, these two pockets, and this pocket. When you open it up, this is just paper, and so I did use some book page to make these two pockets, and then some pieces from that paper collection to decorate with, um, and I just put paper down there. So um, for the inserts and the, the extra pockets, you will need some scraps of paper or book page or whatever it is you want to use. All right, we're going to keep that one nearby in case we need it. I think I can remember what I'm doing. Um, so today for the one we're making, I'm going to use this really pretty paper. This is a Cartabello, Cartabella Country Kitchen, and I've been I've got a few packs of this left. I've been hoarding it. It's an older kit, but you may still be able to get it like on eBay or something. Um, but again, I love it. It's Country Kitchen by Cartabella, and I thought that would be good for fall. So, and I've got the sticker sheet and some of the, um, pay, one of the pages, a couple of the pages that have the little pieces of ephemera. I went ahead and cut them apart, and we may use the cards or we may use the pattern paper. We'll see how we do. Okay, I'm going to set that aside though because first we're going to do some scoring, a little bit of cutting, it's not hard, and then gluing it together. So I'm going to use my scoreboard. Now, one thing is if you do have a paper that has a direction to it, you're going to want to pay attention here. If yours is like mine, just like if it's just polka dots or stripes or something, it doesn't matter. But I have polka dots on one side and I have roosters and chickens on the other and they are directional. So what you want to do if you have a direction, I'm going to turn the paper upside down. Okay, just the way I have the, where you're gonna score and everything, that will make it work when you fold it together. All right, so the scoring is not hard. The first thing we're gonna do is score at four and one eighths. And I know that sometimes upsets people when we have that one eighth there. It is like, um, you get, you know, four and a quarter, four and a half, four and three quarters, and then you're at five. So think of it as halfway to four and a quarter of an inch, if that helps any, but it's four and one eighths, and then eight and one quarter, eight and a quarter. Now I'm gonna just flip that over, and actually I have to turn it, and I'm gonna just do it on the other side. This is really thick paper, and I'm hoping that is going to help me um, not crack the paper. 
All right, so again, your paper's upside down, four and one eighths, eight and a quarter. I will have all these measurements in the description for you, okay? Then what you wanna do is you wanna turn your paper one time to the left, okay? So you had it upside down, now you're turning it one time to the left, all right? And then we are gonna score at three and a half inches, and at nine inches. And again, I'm gonna flip my paper and just do it again at three and a half and nine. This part is optional. I just am hoping my paper won't crack. Okay, that's all the scoring. I will have that in the description for you um, to make it hopefully a little bit easier. Now, you wanna turn your paper so it has turned the direction um, that, that's, that's up. To help you know what we're gonna do is, let's see, I'm gonna be working first on this bottom section. We're gonna be cutting out some of the score lines. So the bottom left corner of mine, and sometimes it's hard to see, and what I may do to help this be easier for you guys to see is add some ink. All right, so we can see those score lines. I'm not pressing down hard yet. We'll, we'll kind of really crease it well once we get to glue in those pockets. I just want to make sure everything lines up first. All right. Um, and if you're going to be inking yours anyway, um, you know, you can go ahead and do this with me. If you can see yours and you don't need the ink, you know, you can skip it. it. It's up to you. I'm just hoping this will make it a little bit easier for you guys to see where I'm cutting. All right. Now, what you can tell is I've got my paper turned the direction that I want it. The top section up here is the three inch section and this bottom section is the three and a half inch section. So if you don't have direction to your paper, <laughs> you wanna make sure you have it turned the right way. So the three inch section is up at the top and the three and a half section is at the bottom. So we are gonna cut out the score, this score line and this score line to begin with, okay? So when I, what I mean by that is I'm going just a teeny touch to the right of where the paper got folded or scored, right? Right up to this score line here. And then I'm gonna go just to the left of it. So you have a sliver, okay? And you kind of pull it up and snip it off. Okay, so now you just have kind of that gap. This makes it all fold together very nicely for us later. All those pockets. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. And the same thing here. So I hope you guys aren't getting tired of my One Page Wonder series. I think we're now, at, this will be 21 if I counted correctly. Um... So hopefully y'all want me to keep going. We'll see. You can let me know. You can leave me a comment and say, move on or keep them coming. Let me know. Um, I have been making other videos to intersperse, not just doing my one page wonders in my journal idea book. But okay, so we've cut the bottoms. Now we're going to turn it and you're going to be cutting the section that's really the top of the paper. So now the paper's upside down again. Don't get ahead of yourself because I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut out this score line. We're not cutting out this one. Instead, we're gonna cut out this one on the, the, the side. So if, if you're doing this along with me, I didn't want you to get ahead of yourself and accidentally cut out the wrong section. All right, so we cut out that score line and then turn it and you're going to cut up this score line. I hope that made sense. It was easy. If you need to rewind it, go back, make sure you're cutting the right one. You can also wait and look at it when I have it all cut and you'll see. Okay. So I have my paper turned the correct way and we have cut um, this, this score line out, the one that's the first one on the left. We've cut this one here. I don't know, that's one, two, on this after the second section in the bottom, 
both. Okay? I hope that helps. All right, now we're going to flip it over. And I really haven't thought about which side I want the... Um, I think I'm going to do it this way. I don't know. We'll see. We'll play with it. Um, where we have polka dots for the pockets. And you see just a few of the chickens and roosters. Okay, so those three fold up that way. This piece folds over, so from the left to the right. And this piece folds down, and this piece folds down. And then what happens? All right, so let's do that again. Fold all three up, fold the top left corner to the right, the right corner down and the middle section down and then pick it up and this right hand section is going to fold because this is going to be our cover and then this is our inside page see it's a little bit shorter inside page okay so we have our flip. This is gonna turn into a pocket. We flip it over. We have a pocket here and a pocket here. Yay! All right, and then when this is glued together, it's a little bit easier. It opens this way and you have a pocket. And then these are those three panels that I mentioned. Um, you've got lots of options of what you wanna do. I'm gonna take just a minute. I'm not gonna do a lot of inking, but just a little bit. A lot of times when I make these on camera, I go back later and do more inking if that's what I want. Um, so you're not spending too much time watching me ink. The, the most important parts to ink now are the pieces that I'm gonna be gluing down. So um, I know it's a little confusing right now, but I promise this is gonna come together easily for you. It's gonna come together quick. And then it's just decorating and deciding if you want other types of pockets and things. And I'll give you some options. I'll, sh I'll remind you again what I did with the original and we'll decide if we're gonna do the same thing or do something different. Okay. So we are going to do some notching for our pockets. And um, I find it easy to um, do the notches and then glue the pocket down as we go. Um, so have yours turned, um, and we're also gonna, if you want to, round these flaps, but you don't have to. I did that on the original one. Okay, so this is our cover, and this is the pocket. So we're gonna be glue, in a minute, we're gonna be adding glue here and here and turning it into the pocket. Now, for my original one, I used this punch and made um, what I think is a really cute shaped pocket or notch for my pocket. Um, you can use a circle punch and just do a circle one. Um, there, there's lots of different punches you can use to make notches. I'm gonna use this one again. This is an old, whoa, Stampin' Up punch. I'm not sure if they even make it more, but it can cut out like little tag shapes. So I'm just eyeballing the center and I'm coming down. I don't know about that much <laughs> to make it. So hopefully now you can see that a little bit and we have a cute pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this one closed and I'm using my PVA Line Co. wet white glue. Um, it has a little bit of give a, a lot of times, and I've been using this almost exclusively um, when I film, sometimes I switch around, but today that's what I'm using. And it's kind of my go-to glue these days. So just PVA Line Co. brand. A um, little less expensive than like art glitter and some of those. Okay, let's flip it over. Oops. Everything's fine. It just, the um, flap got flipped. <laughs> the flap got flipped. Okay, so this one, you have, your flap has a side load pocket. This is gonna turn into a pocket. 
So I'm gonna notch it as well. Again, I'm just trying to eyeball the center. And then this is a pocket, so we're gonna notch it. And if you want to mark the center with a, a ruler and a pencil, and then you'll know where your um, notch should go if you want it centered. All right, so let's glue this pocket first. It's just like the one we did on the front cover. And um, nice deep pocket. And again, we can decorate these or do whatever we'd like to them here in a little bit. Um, and then this pocket is a side load. So we're gonna add glue to the top and the bottom of this flap, just like this. All right, and again, welcome back. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you. Um, if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel, giving my videos a thumbs up and a comment. It really helps me as a creator um, to be able to keep making content for you guys. So I hope you'll consider doing that for me. Okay, now that's the back. So we're back to the front. We're doing good. Now we need to do this pocket. This is the last one. So I'm going to notch it oh, and glue it down just like the front and back covers. All right. And if you want to see some of the supplies I use, they're in the description, or in the description is a link to my Amazon storefront. And you can see the supplies that I use. I am an Amazon associate, so I get a few pennies um, if you end up buying something, but it's no, no cost to you. So it's a good, good for, for both of us for you to see the types of things I like to use and if you need a supply. All right, look at that. And we have all these polka dots. I'm gonna, just because I want a little bit of ink to show you these three panels. Um, I'm gonna do that. All right, so it's looking, now these are flipping around because there are flaps, they're not pockets. We didn't forget anything. Um, I did on the original one, oops, that's my crocodile, not my quarter rounder, corner rounder. Oops, and that's not the right one either. I have too many things that are this brand and this color, even my scissors, it's their Singer brand, but it's that almost the same as that We Are Memory Keepers color. Okay, so use whichever one you want. Um, I'm using the quarter, the qu one quarter inch. And sometimes it just gets off, so I just snip that a little bit. I don't know why it does that occasionally. All right, and then this one I'm also gonna snip or round the corners. Okay, I think it's if I'm not careful with how I line it up. User error. All right, there's a lot of polka dots going on, so it's a good thing we have some fun things to decorate with. Now, I've glued everything together, and it looks like it's lined up pretty well. If you want to go back, I'm trying to remember who told me this, like wait sometimes to make some of your heavy creases, and it helps. Okay, and this one I didn't get snipped very well when I cut out that um, score line. So I just, I just decided to snip it so it's not looking raggedy there. All right, I really like how this one turned out. I hope you guys like it too. You'll have to let me know if you like this one. So it's really not hard. It has a few steps, but it's not difficult. Um, now, on my original one, what I did, I'm going to start here um, to decorate, is I added um, some journaling paper here. Just use some cop strips of coffee dye paper and put a little tab at the top. And then I made those book page pockets that flipped up into journaling spots. So, because I'm kind of envisioning this one being something to put in a journal. If you wanted to, this one is sturdy enough. You could even sew in a signature, two signatures or one. Um if you wanted to make this even like a mini journal. So that would be cute. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make um, the pockets. I'm show you how I did those. So um, this is again, book page from a geometry book that I've obviously really been enjoying using. Um, all right, I want 
the top of my pocket to be the fold, the crease, and I covered up the a lot of the book page with some of the pattern papers, but I did fold it this way so that the font is the correct direction, you know. All right, this pocket cannot be any wider than, I want it to be about three and three quarter inches wide because um, I want to see a, a little bit of the polka dots. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off the, um, oh, look at that. If I trim off the, um, tag, or the white border, I did a tiny bit of the text there. It ended up being the three and three quarter inches wide. All right, now that's for this one. This panel is actually a little more narrow. Um, so it's going to need to be a three and a half inch wide pocket. Um, this one, for whatever reason, I did a, a, a pocket that was not as deep. And so it had a smaller journaling spot. And then on this side, I did a great big one. So they each took one piece of book page. And I'm going to just cut this one off at two inches. Okay. So again, it's got two layers on the flap. because so I want it to open up. And we'll journal in there and then um, we'll decorate it if we want to. So the way you install this one is hold it together um, as if it's just, you know, one layer. This is where it stays open. And then just add glue like you would to a normal pocket to both sides and the bottom, which will leave it open. And then we'll have that wonderful flap there for the journaling spot, the hidden journaling. So one thing to think about when you're doing these is pick, if you're going to use book page, make sure you're using book page that isn't too frail or brittle. Um, you know, if you've got some really fabulous, you know, old book page, this might not be the, what you want to make your pocket out of. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, again, to turn this into a journaling spot, I'll need to add some writing paper there, which I'll do later. All right, so there's the first one. And then the second one, again, just uses one sheet of book page. And again, this one needs to be three and a half inches wide because it um, is a little more narrow. So I'm gonna be cutting off some of the, well, are a bit more of the text on this one. And then this one, I just left this size. So let's see, it ends up being uh, three and three quarter inches tall, all right? And we are going to install it the same way as we did the little one. So hold it where you wanna leave it open, flip it over and glue on the two sides and the bottom, leaving the top open. And I'm just kind of looking where I lined up the other one. Make sure it opens, yay, it opens. And then we will add some writing paper or coffee dyed paper or something under there. Cute. Now this one, again, before I just did some writing paper, why don't we do a different type of pocket though, just to be different and fun. So get, if you wanna do that, get yourself another piece of book page and um, let's do this one an angled with, with a hidden journaling spot. So for this one, the, the um, the font will be sideways, but then I'm okay with that. All right. If you do it this way, it would be sideways. So decide which side you want the angle of the pocket to be on. So I just took the book page that I'm using and, you know, folded one corner down to the other side. All right. Now let me measure because then I'll know how wide I want this triangle to be. I want it to be about three and three quarter inches wide. So I'm going to chop it off so it fits on my trimmer. And then I want it to be, I think I said three and three quarter inches. And the way I'm laying it on here is I'm just lining up 
the straight edge of the pocket and I'm gonna chop off this tail. We'll call it a tail. And I think I'm gonna chop off the top as well just so that this pocket, I'm gonna do it at four inches just so that it has a little bit different shape to it, okay? And then this one is gonna get installed this way and it'll flip open like that. Cute, I like it. And if you wanted it to be on this side, just flip your paper the other way. Well, it won't work because I've already chopped it. Before you chop it, if you want to flip it that way. Yay, I'm giving you options and I gotta make sure they work, right? <laughs> Since I'm telling you, you can do it. I better double check myself. Okay, again, hold it where you want it to stay open. I'm going to just add glue to the bottom and the side. And I'm going to leave the this little side and this little top open. It just makes the pocket a little bit easier to stick things in and out of. So it's just glue on these two sides. Whoa. All right. Now, it is going to make it fun trying to cut paper to fit in there with these little weird angles, but it can be done. Or you can not add writing paper to it. Oh, I like it. Now, let's get out our fun decorative pieces and the stickers and make this one look super cute really quick. Oh, and we'll also do the closure. Let's work on that next um, because that may impact... Uh, how we want to decorate. So I'll do a similar one here. All I did was I punched a circle and then I used an eyelet. And this is one of those chunky eyelets. Um, if you don't have that, you can just punch a hole. It, it'll be okay. Um, let's see if I have something that I want to decorate the front with that maybe we can just stick an eyelet on. Like, aren't those cute? The little, um, jars of we've got pickles and tomatoes carrots little um things that have been canned and and put up in the country kitchen I don't want that on the front we'll see we'll see um sometimes I have too many choices and then I take a long time making a decision on how I'm gonna decorate but that really is the fun part you know what does this say cooking is love made visible? That's cute. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I like this Farm Fresh sign right here. So a lot of times my closure, or what I'm gonna do with my closure will depend on how I'm gonna decorate it. So I think I'm gonna glue this piece down. I like this green gingham too. We'll find a piece or a way to use some of that, hopefully. Again, use any papers you have though. This will be a fun project with any type of scrapbook paper. All right, and I'm gonna put this one kind of to the bottom right hand corner. Looks like I've got a little tiny strip. I don't know why, but we're gonna trim it off before I stick it down. It's probably, when I, was, I cut these out on my big guillotine paper cutter, and probably just got caught. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna just put an eyelet there and not worry about a circle. So let's see what we've got. Oh look, I've got red ones. Oh guys, that's so cute. I was thinking gold, but I think the red really makes it pop. You can't, for some reason the gold ones don't wanna come out anyway. Oh, the gold's cute too. Which one do we like? I'm gonna go with the red. I think I had those red ones from Christmas last year or Valentine's Day when I was making something. I may have to get some more of those. Those are cute. I love to collect supplies. If you guys haven't figured that out, I have a little bit of a stash. All right, I am going to eyeball the center and hope I do a good job. And with these chunky eyelets, you do want to come up just a little bit so they're not hanging off. Whoa. I may have just lost my eyelet. All right. And I got to get out my big bite crocodile to set this thing. Since my other crocodile, one day I'm going to break down and get myself a new crocodile. Or the new a new handheld one. Not that getting this one out is that big of a deal. 
but it sets the eyelids beautifully and my handheld one does not. So at least I have a workaround. I'm fortunate, right? <laughs> okay. So I have the front decorated a little bit. Let's go to the back and see what we want to put on here. I don't want to forget that I also have these fabulous stickers. And um, I think I definitely want to use them in some way. Um, da, 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 da. Ooh, how about a rooster? <laughs> I love stickers. Okay, we're going to do the rooster like this. And that kind of alludes to the roosters inside, right? And then, what did I put here? This one says farm fresh. Maybe we'll do the farm to table. Um, and I haven't even gotten my ink out. I've just been using whatever is on this very, very well loved little sponge tip that needs to be replaced. I go through these a lot. So I try to make them last. Okay, I'm gonna glue this down. And again, I could be doing a little more. I could be collaging, I could be adding ribbons. You know, you guys make, make these your own, make it fun. I'm just um, enjoying using the paper kit and seeing what I can come up with. And we'll do a Velcro dot to keep this one from flapping. And if you um, need some Velcro dots, these are the super skinny ones that I love and I use them all the time. Um, and they're in my Amazon shop too, if you need um, to see the kind that I'm, or you wanna see the kind that I'm using. I like these particular ones because they're um, so, they're not thick at all, which I love. Okay. That's the back, actually. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked to see if any of these cards that I cut out are the right size for my pockets. But you know what? We're going to stick her in there. Oh, I need something smaller to go in this pocket. I may have to trim something down. I need something skinny. This um, There's a piece of paper in this kit that has the um, old, like a, a pattern of the old stoves. It is so cute. It's one of my favorite pieces. I've used this kit to make some fun, um, what am I trying to say? Fun cookbooks, handmade like junk journals, but to use as cookbooks with all the recipe cards and everything. Love it. And um, we're just going to put a sticker here. And so um, I've used these papers before. Like I said, I have a few packs left. I bought I bought them uh, quite a few at one time because I was really obsessed with making those little cookbooks. I know. It happens. Okay. Let's find something. She's cute. I don't know if I just want to use her as a card or if I want to use her as a decoration. Here, that'll be a cute one to go in there. I'm just trying to see if I have things that I can put in all these pockets that I made. This one may be too wide, but we can trim him down. Rooster Red. I think I told you guys this in another video at one point, but my mother was a very 80s thing to do, I think, uh, 1980s. She decorated her whole kitchen um, with roosters so there was rooster wallpaper there's one of those uh rooster wallpaper borders around the top of the kitchen um she had ceramic roosters she had um i haven't inked all these things but i'll do that later um baskets that had roosters on them she had her you know hand towels and you know dish towels everything was roosters and now whenever I see roosters they really make me happy because I do miss my mom and um it, it's nice to have things that help me remember her all right this almost fits on here I don't think we'll have to lose the um the lettering just the border so I'm going to trim this really 
close to those letters. Yeah, they hang off just a touch, but I'm okay with that. I like covering up um, the book page a little bit so you can still see it's there. And then when you lift it up, did I glue it down? I think I did. There, I don't know what happened. It just got a little touch of glue, but it's okay. All right, I'll be careful gluing this one down, not to close my flap. All right. Okay, that still needs some writing paper. What do I wanna decorate this one with? I do think it will help. You know what, guys? I think I'm just gonna glue this one down. I'm not gonna to try to turn this into a journaling spot. Um, it's certainly easier when you do squares or rectangles. So I'm just gonna glue this one down and it'll help that pocket be a little sturdier too. All right, and then let's decorate it. Let's decorate it and we need to decorate this one too. Oh, she's cute. She is very cute. I think what we're gonna do with her is trim her off too. So let's remeasure the width of this. This one is three and a half. So she can't be any wider than three and a half. So let's make her a little less than three and a half inches wide. Yeah, and we'll just stick her on there. All right, um, if you're worried about the thickness of your book page, like I said, try to pick one that's fairly sturdy. Um, but then when you layer some writing paper or something on the other side, that will also help. That will help it a great deal. Okay, so um, question, do you guys still like having like cookbooks that you actually use and hold and have like maybe family recipes or things? Or are you very much into just doing recipes like on your phone or like on your tablet or something like that? Because um, I do both. Like I have my cookbooks. I have recipes like in my mom's handwriting. I made my daughter a big um, junk journal cookbook. And then I a few of the recipes I photocopied so she'd have like her grandmother's and her great grandmother's handwriting and stuff. But then a lot I wrote out for her so she'd have my handwriting um, as she gets older and I get older. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Do people still do that? Do they still enjoy that? Let me know what you guys think. I would like to know. This is cute. It's a little wish list card. That would be fun actually for some journaling. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's flip this into. All right. First, I'm gonna cut off where it says wish list, and then I'm gonna cut it off so you get the numbers. And then we still we have her, and she's cute. So let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna put this here. I'll add a little bit of ink. So anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you guys like cookbooks, recipe books? Do you like having family recipes that are handwritten? Or do you prefer things like on the computer and typed out where you could... Like I know a lot of people, they even just will print. Oh, that's a pretty pattern. They'll just print out the recipe uh, so they don't have to worry if it gets messed up or splattered on or whatever. So I don't know. I guess that's not maybe um, the best for the environment if you print it out every time you're gonna use it. But anyway, things to think about, right? All right, and then wish list. I'm gonna tear it. I haven't done a lot of tearing or any tearing, I don't think, but that'll give us just a nice edge. And then maybe on this flap, where's the crease? Um, I was thinking about having this up here me think of what kind of paper I could put there. Ah, I'm sitting here talking about it and there's a recipe card. Look at that. It's a little bit different color. If I use the line, then I can still call this wish list if I want to. I think I'm going to do that. So how wide, that'll help me know how wide I want the other piece to be. That is just a smidge under three quarters three and one quarter inch 
just a smidge under. So let's see how I did. Yay! All right, so I'm going to glue this one down. Whoa. And put it here. And then I'm going to stick that over top just to kind of bring that color yellow in with this and everything will be good. All right. And this paper, this Cartabella paper, I don't know if you've ever worked with it. It is a really a particularly thick. It has, I mean, it really feels good in your hand. And sometimes it's really, really hard for me to decide because I like both sides often of the paper. It's hard for me to decide, you know, like I love those little flowers, um, how to use them. So again, good to have options, but this is going to really give this some heft to this flap. Okay. And now I just need to decorate this piece. I think we're getting close. We haven't decorated or put anything in that pocket yet either. Um, what do I want to do? I'm thinking, oh my gosh, look at this. He's cute. He's got to go in here. I'm going to put him in this pocket just because he makes me happy. Okay. Um, maybe now is the time to get one of the other patterns in here. I think I was looking to see if I had any of the gingham left. If not, we'll do the, we'll do the rooster. It'll be okay. Oh, there's some. Ha! That's what I wanted. For some reason, I just wanted to use some of that gingham. All right, so we got to measure because I want to make this fit. So this, if I make it three and three and a quarter, I'll have a trim of book page left. So let's start with a piece that's three and a quarter. All right. And then to get this angle, it's not going to be easy. It's just not. So this is how I'm going to do it. I am going to, I can see the book page and I can see, see where I'm at. I think I can. All right. And if I lay it on here and lift up. I can sort of see that I am where I need to be. The, and the, the actual grid on this paper makes it a little bit easier, too. So we're just going to hope that I laid it down close enough to the correct angle. And this isn't necessary. I mean, you could just leave the book page and add a sticker or a fussy cut or something on here. You don't have to layer yours up like I am. All right, and then I just need to trim off the top. And again, the line of the paper helps me. Cute. All right, wasn't too hard. So um, if you want to layer yours like I did, I would measure the width of the pocket. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then um, draw your angle and snip it off. Okay, gluing this down. And kind of getting it centered in here a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a sticker. We'll put a sticker on here. So which one do I want to use? I love her, but she's way too big for that. Um, oh my gosh, how about the pig? <laughs> too cute. Too cute for words. And maybe something else too. Why not? Um, hmm. Love this. Let's see if I can make that look right. It's like a little tag. All right, I may come back and work on that some more, but how cute, right? All right, now I have a little bit of room. I put the cow in here. It's, y'all may not agree with me that it's cute because it's showing you how you butcher the cow, I guess, into the different cuts of meat, but I still think it's cute. So I'm gonna put it there. Hmm. The farmhouse with the windmill that was on the piece of paper that I just chopped up to put here is also in a sticker and I liked it and so I'm gonna get to use it by using it as the sticker and I lifted it up because I realized I was going crooked with the windmill and if you're worried these stickers are pretty sticky um, if you're worried about it add a little glue before you stick it down all right now all I need to do is add 
some type of closure. And this one, it the way I did it before is I just looped my twine this way because I want to pull it through. Now the issue is I don't know how long I want um, I want it to be, so I haven't cut it yet. I'll give you guys the measurement here in a second. Whoops, that didn't work. I thought I could snake that through really quick. And you don't have to wrap it around as many times as I did. Um, that's totally up to you. Obviously, I can't make it be big enough to put this through with the little bit I'm using. Ha, I have an idea. We'll measure this one. This one keeps flopping funny. There we go. All right, we'll measure this one, and then I'll be able to cut my piece. So mine, I put a little knot here, so we'll have it hang off. All right, that's 12. 24. Thirty-six, and let's say, uh, let's just call it forty inches. Now that's a lot because I went one, two, three. I guess it's not that many. Three, and all I'm doing is just sliding that under, and it really is effective and an easy closure. And I like how it looks when I kind of go like that. Okay, so. We're going to go with 40 inches. Hmm, that's a loose piece. Okay, 40 inches. So I've got, I think that's like 23. That should be about 40. Well, if I, guys, I am so silly. I got to do it the right way. Here's the end. 23, I was about to cut it off like at about 18 inches. And 17 makes 40. All right, you gotta love math. Oh, I haven't put anything in this pocket. Well, you know, we can't have that. We gotta have something in the pocket. I really liked her, so we're gonna put her in there. All right, grab your string, make a little loop like this. Stick it through your hole or your eyelid if you did an eyelid like me. And then just pull it, pull the ends through the loop. Now all I did with this one is I did tie a little knot so it looks like the other end. But this one's nice and short so you know this is not the one you grab to start wrapping with. But it will also, if you're twine tends to unravel a little bit it'll also stop it from doing that okay so we've got one two three and we're going to tuck it under could have gone a little bit longer you might want to cut yours more like 42 inches maybe but there we go it's long enough if you like it extra long okay oh how cute I hope you guys like it. Please let me know what you think. Um, I imagine I'm gonna be making some of these like with holiday papers. And um, I think this would also be a cute project to do is like a mini gratitude journal. I'm thinking about hosting another in-person workshop around the theme of gratitude late October, early November. And um, this might be what we do. We could do one of these, but do it all about gratitude, add some extra papers in there for journaling. I think that would be a really fun project. So let me know what you think about that too. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, until next time, have a great day.